Welcome to the Romania River channel and my first impressions of Starpoint Gemini Warlords, a game by Little Green Man Games and published by Asperg Interactive that's currently available for early access for about 28 euros and 29 US dollars or thereabouts. Now the game itself is a in principle and its accent falls upon a space spaceship simulation in the vein of Starfleet Command type games but unlike Starfleet Command where you had battle mode and then you had basically strategic map mode where you move around in quadrants in this you're basically the map mode is more of a optional thing you can run around quite perfectly with your ship besides that the game itself evolved from its predecessors starpoint gemini 1 and starpoint gemini 2 with uh, old mechanics still being visible but refined and new mechanics such as the territory control the research stuff the planetary invasion the station conquests and stuff like that and then with warlords itself the game itself expands quite a ways all outside of starpoint gemini 2 and refines Quite a few of the older mechanics, like for example, boarding actions have been, how should I put this, made to be a bit more challenging, especially in the beginning phases when you don't have the proper technologies and stuff like that. And now you can't really do what I did in my Starpoint Gemini 2 let's play, which is basically ricocheting from a ship, a targeted ship to the nearest station and back really quickly with more troops to conquer it. But by contrast, your troops now regenerate by themselves, so you don't have to worry so much about that because gods know I've undocked so many times with not enough marines to capture a ship. But yes, the old adage that doing destroy missions where you capture the enemy ship instead of destroying it is still valid. That is the quickest way you can earn money in this game. Aside from that though, I wish to take a moment to state that the standard disclaimer applies, which is namely that the developer slash publisher gave me a review copy of the game for the purposes of doing this video. Aside from that though, I wish to also mention the fact that about four or five months before I got the review copy, uh, Little Green Man Games asked on their public Twitter if anybody wanted some of their spare t shirts they had laying around from one of their conventions. I can't remember which one exactly it was. And I asked for one, and apparently they also had some spare stuff to basically cropped together a um, fan bundle they gave out at their respective uh, display. So yeah, I wish to mention that because yeah, it may not sound like much but I do appreciate that but it doesn't affect me in terms of being a bit more positive because this game is an evolution over Starpoint Gemini 2 but at the current time it has glitches, and even without the glitches, some of the mechanics can be quite annoying. Like for example the boarding actions, they are balanced to prevent the steamrolling stuff I did in my Starpoint Gemini 2 let's play, but from another point it's basically RNGs with a big wheel of Wisconsin cheese added on top. So yeah, care has to be taken not to get too overly excited with this game because there's a lot of things to like, but quite a lot of things to also dislike. But let's actually get to showing a wee bit of it. Let's see, there's a dreadnought time, so around here somewhere, I think. This is around the time when I had... Um, when I had to wait for a patch because the game itself had a quite impressive glitch, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. 
that fleet over there, which is one single ship at the current time, wasn't one single ship before the patch. It was an infinity of ships that kept respawning. Basically, once this thing would blow up, it would respawn another exact maker ship, armors, arm, weapons and arms and whatever from the wreck. So yeah, even with 9, well, 0 0.90, the game had quite some interesting issues pop up. At the current time, this is what I'm at in terms of territory control. Anything that's yellow is mine. Green is allied. Which is quite odd considering everybody was blue up until I sieged this place, at which point they apparently were quite happy that I was kicking the door in on... What are these guys? The rogues. The rogue gallery, however you want to say it. Now I'm going to show you guys a quick idea of what station combat looks like, but just a quick mention, these are the in new mechanics, so to say, with, well, new mechanics introduced with Star Point Jaguar Warlords to help with your um, conquest, so to say. Well, no, not really help, but prevent you from dying spectacularly because, yeah, you do need research to improve your ships that you build via shipbuilding, not much said there. You can capture, you can capture enemy ships and opt to send them to be reverse engineered, which requires this being the hub station. You start off with a hub one station, which is this bottom level, only access with these things. Well, only have access to these things, which are. If I'm not mistaken, the hangar, the tactical, the mining, the salvage, and the research. You do not have access directly to the trade center production plant, which allows you to re reverse engineer sh enemy ships, and the logistics center. This one's decently interesting because the civilian fleets do missions like these, which you can do yourself. And they give you small benefits here and there, or sometimes rather large benefits like repairing tea gates, for example. Though, for some reason, this tea gates glitched. Nah, don't know why, it just never works. I guess we'll see later. It never gets the mission to get repaired. Oh, and something quite interesting the. Um, Stations sometimes are not um, the main uh, or biggest station in a sector. Is not always the station that's actually controlling the sector, like in this case, where this thing's under the control of the Revenants, but this is under the control of the Nexus. So nominally, the sector is under the Nexus. Overall, if there's no planet, the forward outpost is first in line in terms of controlling a sector so if for example you guys pop into a new sector and see like for example here you'd be like okay capture this capture the sector now you have to capture that first then capture this or for example what is it okay guys did I discover it yet yeah here See? If I went down here and just captured that, I wouldn't have the sector. Oh, and radiation belts, like there is one here, in this area, it's completely freaking overpowered overall. It's basically a great wall to prevent your ass from doing anything you like. Because radiation bypasses your shields completely and wrecks your ship. Slowly, but wrecks your ship. You have a consumable, which is an environmental shield, and if I'm not mistaken, a perk under personal. Oh, not personal, where was it? 
Ah, engineering, Space Wolf, this one. Now, in terms of these things, you want to get this line really rather quickly, because it improves your boarding efficiency or proficiency, which means your soldiers count for more than dick cheese. Sorry for the language, but they get killed remarkably quickly without that and without these types of technologies. This in particular is quite very important. This, mm, not so much, and this can be crucial for capturing bigger ships than your own. Like for example, if you capture a, um, or attempt to capture a carrier, I'll actually show you guys when I try to capture something. We're going towards that station in any case, so yeah. Not much to say um, in terms of uh, boarding up until I can actually get hands on and show you guys. Now when you start to capture a station, regarding it, regardless if it's a forward outpost, guard post or garrison, those being the upgrades for the forward outpost, this is the type of situation you're presented with. Big stations, i.e. not the forward outpost and so on, do not have... Let me just remember. Big stations have shields, small ones don't. Uh, see, this is the defense fleet. Let's just pick one to randomly capture. Now, this is the ideal situation you'd want. Because you'll take damage for every segment you go through. And this green plus is a med bay. Now, usually the med bay regenerates quite a fair bit of your troops, which, if you guys remember from this, with the boarding angel, can be quite impressive. I've re regenerated 50 soldiers on the other occasion in my dreadnought. Okay, 16. Usually the next one after the med bay is empty, and that configuration with med bay second to last from the bridge usually means you can net the ship. If you get lucky with your uh, roll on the healing in the med bay, and once you capture the ship. You get the options, send it to be a reverse engineer once you have that logistics center thing, sell it, which is quite a bit easier to do now, well, actually this whole thing is basically a quality of life improvement over the tractor, the damn ship, to the nearest station in slow bolt mode, enjoy, cause yeah, I believe about 3 or 4 hours of my Starpoint Gemini 2 Origins and Starpoint Gemini 2 Vanilla Let's Plays are, and these being 3 to 4 hours each, me tractoring ships back to the station because it takes a bloody long time. In this case, let's just opt to sell it. When you opt to sell it, some, or opt to anything, a couple of ships from your fleet pop in, tractor it, and boom. Come on, come on, go warp off with it and you get their money automatically. Quite a bit better than Starpoint Gemini 2. I think most people would agree. Now in terms of um, planetary conquest I'm not actually gonna do that because if I do that it'll probably take about 50 or 60 minutes to actually do this video completely. So we're gonna skip that. Station Conquest, as I said, take out that. Take out the um, shields and the platforms underneath the shields, because there's a shield generator and a platform under there. Take all those out, and the station surrenders. So there's not much to say there. Let's get the hell out. Or actually, let's use the T-Drive, which has been 
also modified from Startup on Gemini 2 into something that isn't a loading screen, which is always appreciated in an open world game. The security alerts don't really matter in your own systems, i.e. in the Concordat, or however it's pronounced in English, because if they scan you, you're basically their boss, so yeah, don't think that's gonna work out too well for anyone, anybody who's like, you're not above the law. I am the law. Okay, now, back on target. The Proxima itself is built once you can actually, well, Technically speaking, it's auto-built, but you have to research every one of these things. And each of these has its own price. So yeah, it's not cheap. Remarkably, it's not too expensive compared to, for example, a Mark II Dreadnought, which I have a couple of later on. But it's getting there, and overall it's basically mostly defenseless within its specific role. Now one thing to mention, the Proxima can only be deployed in one specific area. To deploy it you need to clear out an area of certain inhibitor platforms and then basically scan a uh, anomaly to pop in the Proxima. Then you defend it up until it's charged up and pop. Not much to say there. The boarding actions you kinda saw. The station capturing you saw. Trading is in, but is uh, is as rudimentary as you guys remember it from Starpoint Gemini 2. What else is there to say, really? The ships themselves, all of them, as you can clearly see with this one, because the Saratoga looked like a bloody iron, or for uh, more British speaking people, a hot iron. Now it actually looks like something you'd want to fly, quite a bit of. Oh, and one thing to mention, the storyline at the current time, which is 28th of April, and up until the launch, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, believe I'm not, the storyline is not available. The only thing that's available from it is a couple of side missions, like, for example, that one over there, and what else? and the first two or three missions from uh, the campaign itself but it's mostly an introductory thing especially for veterans who are used to um, dicking around only with one ship because yeah all dogs and that sort of stuff besides from that not much else to say you research stuff to improve your infrastructure you uh, the relics themselves have been changed, you no longer collect relics to do some unfathomable thing later on with them, I have no clue, never actually collected them all, I'm not one of those 100%ers. And In this one it's basically a skill point and sometimes a perk point, depending on luck. So basically you go scan it, you no longer have multiple options like boarding, repairing or whatever, you just scan it. And then you get the reward. Not much there. More of a oversimplification, not oversimplification, but it is somewhat more simplified than what was before. But what was before was a grind uh, mini feature, so to say, which is not fun. Not for a majority of people. And if you're the type to actually gain fun from that, well, I hope you're getting set fun while watching something or reading something or doing something else and basically snowboarding from one relic to another. Because otherwise... Okay, what else is there to say? Not much really. The game itself is iterative upon uh, the previous Star Point Gemini games, as clearly be seen. So, if you read the Star Point Gemini 2 review. Hmm. Ah, it's this guy. Setting course. And then just check out this first impressions, you'll probably have a great idea 
how the game is in terms of pretty much everything. Because basically this is Starpoint Gemini 2 with a lot of extra stuff added on top. The ships themselves are now eye candy. I even say a couple of them are pretty much porn for ship lovers. Like for example some of them yeah are ugly like I don't know. But yeah. ships like the cruiser from uh, the Concorde, the Solari Concorde, for example, is sexy as hell. And most of the ships from what was the manufacturer of this guy? Can't remember. Let me just see. Can I check it out in here? Most of the ships from this uh, manufacturer of the Saratoga are also very, very beautiful. At least in my opinion, they have a sort of um, what I imagine would be alien aesthetic to them. Granted, they're not uh, dark shit brown, but they are quite decently futuristic looking. Multi ops industries, that's the guys. But, ah, one thing to mention. Acquiring ships is much more difficult now. For example, I spent about 20 hours basically going like, okay, if I can't steal it, I probably can't have it, aside from the con the Concorde ships. Up until I realized I could actually dock at these stations. Really did not know that. Yeah, I'm really that bad at gaming. Really should read manuals more often. Or check forums. And each station can have its own particular aesthetic. The um, ships available don't change. Like, for example, I'd imagine if I lost my headquarters, whoever captured it would have access to Solari ships. If I capture this, I'd have access to Nexus ships if it builds them. I'm not sure. Now, just to quickly show you guys how crazy stuff can get in quite a few hours. No. No. Let's go to this one. This should be mid side quest mission so I'm not gonna show you guys too much. But yeah. Things have changed quite a bit. One thing to note though the AI itself, at the current time, it might change a bit because it did change from 0.9.0 to 0.9.02, I think. The AI really didn't like being aggressive at all. After the latest patch, they're at least defending their territory. Because I captured this area and I was fully expecting not to have anything to deal with, and I went down here. While I was down here trying to get the Proxima up, which I failed spectacularly because the AI dogpiled me with every other fleet, this fleet went up here, recaptured that, and recaptured the sector. So the AI is improving to a certain degree, and the game itself has quite a bit more extensive mod support than uh, Starpoint Gemini 2 and Starpoint Gemini 1 ever had. One thing to note though is ship balance has changed quite a bit as well. Carriers are no longer a direct upgrade from dreadnoughts, particularly if you dislike the idea of having escorts like I do. So if you're more of a lone wolf, not like me, no, actually like me, you want to stick with dreadnoughts. I learned it in this side mission most painfully. Because losing your shield as a carrier to a cruiser would never happen in Starpoint Gemini 2 if you have decently fitted ships. Or a decently fitted ship, pardon. Uh, one thing to note... Yeah. We'll avoid that. Is that what was it? I was thinking of something in ah, yeah. the mercenary system is completely gone, so no more mercs. 
but now that they gave prisons a bit of a more interesting twist versus what they were in Starpoint Gemini 2, when you prison break, which is quite difficult to do, but when you manage to do it, <clears throat> you get quite a few ships, mostly randomly I believe, during your side. And they're ships of different makes, so yeah, that is one way to get reinforcements in a jiffy if you have enough boarding troops, so to say. But yeah, besides from that sort of stuff, and still a decent amount of boobies in the game. I'm a dude, you can't fault me. Game is basically a much improved version of. Start point Gemini 2. If you consider some of the RNGs things being a further RNGs, an improvement. Granted, with the boarding actions you can't control results, but if you get your first boarding action repulsed, the enemy ship you are trying to board the first time automatically gains immunity to teleportation, so yeah. Hopefully there will be a mod to fix that, because I don't think it's a uh, accidental feature. So in conclusion, overall, if you guys liked, for example, Starpoint Gemini 2, and were like me, always complaining that... How should I put this? Stations were never conquerable and you always had to deal with passing near them or whatnot. well now that's fixed now you can actually capture them and you can capture the planets too which is a uh, later early access thing I don't believe they actually had it planned could be wrong but apparently the reason why it's so weird in terms of implementation is because it's something people really wanted and with Starpoint Gemini Warlords Developers really wanted to do their best in terms of giving their fans what they wanted. So yeah. <laughs> if you like Starpoint Gemini 2, keep an eye on this one. If the glitches are fixed, because there are some very annoying glitches at the current time, sometimes the game hard crashes when you capture an enemy ship and it warps off. Once those are fixed, and they probably will be considering the patch that was not even a major one overall, it was like 17 megabytes overall. Uh, if that's any, any indication, the game will probably not have many, if any, glitches. And the developers are quite responsive to ones you do report. If, you're, if you guys are new to the genre itself, i.e. spaceship combat stuff, mm, overall I think it's a decent title to look into, because the ship part is deep. It is quite pronounced in terms of depth, but everything else is light. So you won't get lost in the minutia. And I don't believe any Starfleet Command 4 or 5 or however much it was at the current time, I think it was 4, will be coming anytime soon. No, nothing's been announced as far as I'm aware. I don't think there will be. And for anybody who's like, eh, Coming from games like, as I said, Starfleet Command, it can be a title to keep an eye on overall. But again, like with the guys who are new or even veterans of Starpoint Gemini 2, make sure the, the launch day reviews for this thing mention as few glitches, bugs, and crashes as possible. Because to be honest, the game managed to boil me piss a couple of times when... I, how should I put this? The carrier you guys are seeing, I captured. It was the fifth one I captured due to the... Um, 
game liking to crash at various points and saves are only at docks the auto saves I mean or in uh, when you finish side missions that are I imagine storyline missions if those get fixed this is a title well keeping an eye on for purchase either at full price or on a sale or whatnot thank you for watching and until next time take care and buff the